Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Snuta Nusekhunu. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you so much for returning and for watching my videos. In this video, I will be talking about cohabitation. And uh, basically, cohabitation is living together with someone that you are in a relationship with, but you're not married to that person. Yeah, so I will be talking about that and i'll be talking from my experience personally and how it was for me and what i believed um when i was living together with my boyfriend at that time and also i'll be talking about where i am right now and my views and thoughts about it and yeah i hope you guys will enjoy this video and i hope that you will take something out of it and learn something and yeah so let's get into the video from the beginning of our relationship my boyfriend and i were just straight up in a long distance relationship and yeah and you know with long distance most we we would see each other um when i am on holiday from school because where i come from and so we would see each other when i go home and i would visit him when i'm home we would meet in town go out on dates and all of that and so um we had that like that was our nature of our relationship the nature of our relationship at that time we were long distancing seeing each other every other two every two months yeah we would see each other every two months because i remember at school i would go back to school late january and then there's march holidays june holidays september holidays and then december so that's when i would get to see him on, on those times and when i was um when I would go home, I would first um, go to his place, like most of I'm tired. So when I go home, I would first go to his place and then like go home. Yeah, but, uh, maybe I would stay there for like two days and then El Kaya, they would think that I'm still in PE at school. And maybe I would say, if we're closing on the 15th, I would say, no, no, we're closing on the 20th so that I can, you know, just spend time with him at his place and then go home so that was the nature of our relationship at that time we would um message others so much because when you're in a relationship basically everything is just tel telephonic and we would do video calls and so we um we didn't uh, have so much time to like to spend physically together in one place so that's how i would make time for us to to spend time together because like once like I, I'm from a home whereby my mom would be like away up or if you want to go town you have to you if you want to go to town you must have like a very reason why you're going to town and if you have if you if like if you're living in PE or from, from school you don't really like necessarily have a lot of reasons to go to town and go to Gile besides like meeting friends or meeting people because what am I gonna do? I don't run my errands in Tata. I run my errands in PE because I stay in PE, right? So when I'm home, there isn't much to do. And so the only chance that I would get to visit him is when basically I start by going to him first and then going home. Yeah, so that was the nature of our relationship. In 2018, he moved to PE. Um, and you guys, I kid you not, when he came, and the day that he came, firstly, <laughs> it was like, oh, I'm thinking of going to PE. And I didn't even waste time. By the end of the day, when he told me that he's thinking of moving to PE, I've already gotten a place for him. I was like, but this is where you're going to stay. Because that's how much I wanted him to like actually move to PE because we didn't have that time to spend together. I was very tired of long distance. And it's crazy that I'm back at long distance right now. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> so he moved to PE. I got him a place, moved to his place. And you guys, I packed my things. There, were, there wasn't even a conversation about, okay, how are we going to do this thing? What's going to happen? I literally... Okay, I didn't really pack my things, but I got like things that I, I was going to wear the following day because I was that I was going to sleep over. But then the sleepover started from um, the sleepover um, came into 
to me going back to rest to fetch some other clothes and then coming back but in your antenna and then fetching other clothes and then coming back and then it ended up where all like majority of my clothes were at his place and we we're basically living together so that's how uh we started living together there was no conversation and it wasn't um it wasn't a situation where also I was forcing myself into the situation, but we both wanted it and we both uh, were very excited to be like, wow, finally we are living together and we are experiencing something that we've never experienced in our relationship because we're in a long distance relationship from the beginning of our relationship. So it was very exciting and yeah, it was very exciting. So that's how I got to live with him for like two years. So from 2018, so 2020 when I when we actually made the decision to follow God and um, I had to move out of his place and I went to live with my sister so yeah if you, have, if you haven't seen my video whereby I'm talking about why did I become celibate and how it all happened please check my video out it's a Q&A and basically I do touch on how it happened and why so yeah please check that out but um basically that's how it happened guys we lived together for two years and then after two years i had to move out because we we're pursuing god so i want to talk about my experience in those two years and actually where my mind was at that time and my beliefs were at that time when we were living together uh yeah we we're basically doing fat and set yeah so i am that kind of girl girl who's like i want to live under his skin like i want to live in him in you know like time in order i love my man i want to be with him all the time and i'm spending quality time and i'm grateful that it's the case for him as well so yeah like i'm that kind of person so gay you can kind of imagine that it was not an easy decision to just move out of his place but then yeah as i have mentioned I want to talk about my experience first i'll start with what i believed with about fat and set at that time which is cohabitation at that time i believed that it's important to live together with someone before you actually get to marry that person so that you can see their habits you can see like their true colors um and so basically to test if you can actually accept this and live to with this person for the rest of your life yes i basically believed that fat and set could be like a prerequisite of marriage like if you are if you want to get to married to, if you want to get married to someone then you must first see them like well, okay how is this person when i live with them what are they what are their bad habits and um can i accept them can i live with this person for the rest of my life can i actually like is it making me revisit my decision is it making me think twice am i going to accept it can i live with it and all of those questions and so those are that, that is where i was and with the, regarding to my experience I've, i found out a lot of things about him that i could not have known had i not lived with him and i think also he also find things he found things about me that he would not have known with uh just meeting and then departing late or like seeing each other from time to time it's not the same when you actually live with someone for oh, please so it's not the same when you actually live with someone for like every day each and every day you are with this person and so you get to see the bad side of this person you get to see them in the morning when they, when they are not in the mood remember when you only see each other during the day or in week or on during weekends or during like holidays or something like that you don't actually even now where you actually excited you're in a good mood you're excited to see this person so you are always kind of like the best version of yourself but when you live with someone you can't keep up with that with being that perfect sinotano you know so eventually it wears off like your true colors like Zavela at the end of the day so you actually see the person for who they really are and you get to see about okay if i haven't eaten like i'm not gonna be okay this is a cabana and all of that because i'm hungry and i'm not in the mood when i'm hungry that's just who i am but if we say we're meeting in town 
or we're meeting in a restaurant i'll be full and so you won't get a chance to be with me when i'm actually hungry or when i'm pmsing or when i'm just like in my mood swings you know so that's one thing that living with someone does it, it actually makes you see the entire person and not just one side of the person when they are in, in in their good or their best selves you know when they are their best selves yeah and so i don't think it's a bad thing but i think it's just a reality because it's the same thing that we experience with our families the same thing we experience with our siblings you see them for who they are you don't just see their best side of them so i thought that like i believed that it's good to actually see this person uh with the good and the bad the flaws and all and then choose but do i want to live like this do i want to live with this person do i love this person with despite of all the things that i have seen in them so that's what i believe like it's a prerequisite everyone must do it i would recommend it i'd be like yeah i'm, I'm those kind of person who i very kind of people who are very loud with their beliefs and so i advocated for fight and said i was like guys it's very important to actually live together with someone you need to see because not that it's a bad thing but you need to see like you need to see them for who they are and then choose them based on that yeah well, so yeah and obviously having to adjust with someone's habits having to adjust with the different uh, personalities or different preferences and things it becomes a challenge because now we are not one person we won't think the same things we two people from di two different backgrounds we do things differently and so having to work together having to navigate a situation where we will find our balance and where we will find what works for us can be challenging which i think when you speak to married couples they will always tell you about the first year of the marriage is the toughest year because you have to navigate navigate living together with this person with this person that you did like with like seeing the other side that you didn't know about this person so it can be difficult from that perspective and so i think that's where i was coming from so okay just get um to know this person before you actually get to marry this person which brings me to the next point which is um where i am right now with regards to living together with someone before you're married i am like on the extreme opposite of where i was three years ago was it three years ago 2020 2018 yeah three years ago four years ago whatever so where i am right now i believe that um obviously um my beliefs right now are very centered on my beliefs in god and my christian my christian faith so um i do believe that right now it's not a good idea to live in together with someone firstly um you're not married to that person you're not married to that person and since you're not married why you you're not uh you shouldn't be sharing a bed with someone that you're not married to no and uh with regards to the bad thing when we're living together and we are trying to grow with god what we were doing what we would do is to like the other one would sleep on the bed and the other one would sleep on the floor i was pregnant at that time so i would sleep on the bed and he would sleep on the floor and by that we were trying to be like okay um we're not having sex anymore and we're navigating um we were pursuing purity and but at the same time as we are pursuing purity at the same time we wanted to keep the setup of living together so when we were pursuing this purity i was like okay i will i will, I will sleep on the bed and you can sleep on the floor in that way we won't be um sexual with each other or anything like that but it was a failure because at night it's very easy to just slide on the floor or he would climb up on the bed and things would happen okay and so it's not a good idea especially if you are someone who is pursuing purity and pursuing honoring god because you are human beings and you're attracted to each other and 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 it's just setting yourselves up for failure because at the end of the day you will see each other naked when you are going to shower and yeah yeah which brings me back to something that i think i need to share which is when we were 
uh, pursuing a relationship with God, we, uh, as I've mentioned, we wanted to keep things how they were, but we wanted at the same time to grow in God, which was very much impossible because we still wanted to shower together. We still wanted to be under the same roof. We still wanted to do things together. Of which now when you're in, in God and when you are pursuing purity and holiness, you can't do all of these things because they compromise the entire things that you're trying to achieve. And the entire goal is just compromised because now you'll see this person naked. Now you will see this person. Um, no, you want you you will see this person uh, in the morning, and you are used to doing things in the morning. And so the first thing that comes to your mind is that. But if you are in your separate places, you can easily like not get into those kind of thoughts. Yeah. So another reason that I believe that um, living together with someone you're not married to is not a good idea is that it actually uh, gives the illusion that you're already married and because basically you do everything together and you're in the same household so you are married but not married. Um, you're married in a sense of your duties, your responsibilities, um somehow you will assume the responsibility like the, the the guy would assume the responsibility of the husband and the woman would assume the responsibility of a wife whereas you don't actually you are not actually husband and wife and so it can give that illusion that you're married and also somehow i think that can impact um it can impact the excitement to get to another stage in your relationship it can make one relax because i have everything go go i actually have the life of a married person it's just that i don't have the ring and i didn't sign but i'm living the life of a married person so somehow it can relax you guys into wanting to get into the next relation like the next step of your relationship it can also impact um yeah as i've mentioned the excitement and also I, I i right now i truly believe in embracing each and every season in your life so if you're in a season of courtship or if you're in a, in a season of a relationship um I, I i think that you should embrace that because it has a purpose i think that you should embrace that stage in your life whereby you are only boyfriend and girlfriend and then um as you grow in your relationship you can go into husband and wife and you can embrace that as well and if you are having kids you can embrace the the the, the, the um a place where you are mother and father so yeah i really really think that it just defeats the entire purpose and it can kill the excitement for growth and for um, the future and basically it can also make people complacent yeah and another reason is that one of you guys might be um like it's very much possible that you want because it's not official it's possible that the other one will be like well i'm not your wife so i'm not gonna do a b and c for you but the other one which is most likely like males are more it's more common for males to be like but how will i know if i want to take you as my wife if i don't say it now it's like you're in some kind of auditions to be the wife to this person while the other person can have a mentality but i can't do i want to a b and c for you because um we're not married so it can be either true it can either be like you guys are both assuming um responsibilities or positions where you are your husband and wife of which you're not or the other person can be testing the other while the other is not um actually living up to those standards because they don't have that title yet so it can cause um troubles fights confusion um also it can just tear up the the, the, the relationship as well so I, I i just don't think that it's worth it i just don't think that um yeah i don't think it's worth it because when you are married like it's defined like no one is going to be confused no one is going to be having expectations no one is going to be um fighting over like blood lines because we we're not married but at the same time like we want to get married so maybe you should do this because it's your husband and wife this is a role of husband this is a role of your wife it's clear when you're married but when you're not married it's not clear it can easily get you guys confused it can easily get you guys to fight because um i've heard of cases whereby someone would say well 
you're not my wife stop doing a b and c god i'm under there living together i'm like but you're living together so why how anyway the person is not your wife but at the same time you're living together and the, the other the, the person who is actually doing wifely duties or wifely things is assuming that because we live together i have all these rights to you while the other person is like yes we might be living together but you're not my wife and so you can't do a b and c there's boundaries okay so it can be confusing in that in in, in that way and it can be um it's just very unnecessary like it's just very unnecessary i think the easiest thing is to do is to date get married living together everything is defined and everything is just um like easier that way and i i i ask, I ask myself sometimes well with all the flaws i've seen in my partner all of a sudden does it erase all of um the good things that i've seen in our relationship no it doesn't so whether i see his bad habits or his flaws it doesn't change our relationship it doesn't change um it doesn't change my love for him it doesn't change how i see him it doesn't change how um we are compatible with each other and how we work good for each other and well with each other and how i see how god has brought us together so the flaws and the habits it's something that you can actually work on which brings me to my point that fat and set is not a prerequisite of marriage i don't actually think that it's necessary to go through that to 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 get to marry someone it's not like you're test driving this person i'm assuming that you choose person based on their personalities based on their values based on their beliefs their characteristics what you're looking for and you're not choosing a person based on um I don't know like you don't actually want the person to be like you and you can like like what i mean by that is that with all the differences that you guys have you can always work together in those differences there's premarital counseling there's counseling if you think you guys cannot handle it there are other married couples which can help you guys to navigate your differences to navigate all the habits the different habits the different whatever you may face the challenges that you will face and either way whether you do it before or after marriage that first year where you are you guys are living together it will always have challenges it will be difficult it will not be easy so why not experience that the right way why not do that in in a godly way in a way that will please god in a way that you will have god's favor in in an environment that will be healthy in an environment that will not be um a case whereby you are compromising your values you're compromising your beliefs you're compromising your relationship with god so if you are going to experience that anyway married or not i would um I would recommend that you actually experience that um, in, in, in the right setting in marriage because I know that sometimes people um, are making it a prerequisite and I have also made it a prerequisite and just so you experience that difficulty before you get married but either way it's it's still you guys that are experiencing that difficulty whether you're married or not it doesn't take away from the fact that you are still the people who are experiencing this so whether you're married or you're not i know that i'm repeating this point uh, like oh, 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 but that's actually the point married or not you would experience it whether you experience it when you are married because also i think the advantage of that is that in marriage there's commitment and you won't just pull out whenever you want you will actually strive to make it work you will make it how uh, you put effort into be like okay this is my husband or this is my wife and we will figure this out together there's more effort from both parties rather than when you're not married you'll be like yeah well this is why i came i didn't want to 
oh this is why like actually you are in the auditions now i see you but okay you don't do a b and c i'm pulling out of this relationship of which the attitude that you should have is to be like okay we have this challenge and you see you have this challenge you see things this way i see them this way how can we work together and you can compromise and you can yeah just work together and sort that out so yeah guys i really really hope that um i made sense <laughs> So yeah guys in closing fat and set is not a prerequisite and you will experience that those challenges either way so rather you do what pleases God rather you do things the way that God intended things to be done you have like forever to figure each other out you have I don't want to say eternity but you have till death do us part to actually um find your what works for you guys and navigate the entire situation you have time you have time so there's no need to rush it before you guys are married and obviously because i'm an advocate for celibacy um it's, it's not a good idea to do it when you are celibate it's not a good idea to do it when you're not married and yeah i think there's so much blessings and so much favor when you do things god's way because god's way is good and god's way is for our own good it's for our benefit it doesn't deprive us of things however it's vital for us and it it grows us it's, it matures us in so many ways it might not feel it it, not, it might not feel that way at the moment you might feel impatient but at the same time his ways are better his ways are good his ways are, are not our ways and so his way of doing things is good and his way of doing things in this topic is to not cohabitate is to not live together with someone that you're not married to is to not share a bed with someone that you're not married to is to wait is to be patient and it's to keep your heart and your mind pure is to pursue purity is to pursue holiness it's not to be sexually immoral it's not to be um yeah, do not have um, sin, do not open room for sin in your life, do not open a door for sin because I think if you're doing that, you're opening a doorway for sin in your life. And yeah, guys, I really, 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 really hope that you have learned something from this video. Um, please just comment down and what do you think about cohabitation? What do you believe about cohabitation? Or um, even before watching this, what were your beliefs prior to that? And yeah, just what do you think about cohabitation? Do you think it's a good idea? And if you think it's a good idea, how would you navigate it? If you're a Christian and trying to live a pure life, and yeah, so please do comment, please like, and please do share the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you are not subscribed, or if you would like to hear more of um, these topics where I'm talking about my celibacy journey and I'm talking about. Uh, my faith and my um yeah basically my faith <laughs> my faith and my celibacy journey and all of that and thank you so much for watching thank you um for subscribing and yeah i will see you guys in my next video